pay the attention? Mike works well. Well, welcome everybody to this great April, Friday, April 13th. Um, we have a great lineup today, and we're going to, we decided to make an effort to get started closer to our earlier announced time of 12.15. We've been letting that drift a little bit, and uh, a couple of members correctly pointed out that we were letting it drift too much, so uh, thank you for the feedback. We do appreciate the feedback. Uh, before I get into our program, just a couple of announcements. Uh, the First of all, I want to say thank you again to Purveya, who has been our sponsor for our First Friday forums uh, this year as well as last year, so we appreciate them. And I know there's Elizabeth is one representative for Purveya, but thanks again to Purveya. Round of applause. And I also want to thank um, Windsor Industries and Charles. Windsor is here for their uh, stage. Um, you may not realize that uh, uh, this staging is actually originally intended for docking uh, at uh, in lakes and rivers and whatever. So a uh, versatile use here, uh, Charles. So we thank uh, Charles and Charles of our Windsor Industries. Um, announcements for the upcoming uh, First Friday forums. Our next First Friday Forum will actually be on the First Friday in May. Um, as you know, we uh, moved ahead a week because last Friday was Good Friday. would not have been a good idea to have First Friday Forum then. Uh, but we're cut our program next month, um, and we, in our committee's humble opinion, we've got a great lineup coming. Uh, uh, we'll be really on uh, the non-attainment status that Sheboygan mm -hmm. County has as, as far as VOC of it. And really the way we want you to look at this is it's not to talk about non-attainment, but it's really to talk about, I think what you're going to hear is how many of our companies in Sheboygan County are really at the leading edge of green technology. And this is one um, example of uh, them being at the leading edge. And you're going to hear how our companies have had to deal with this attainment level for emissions that is really stringent in Sheboygan County. And we're also, we'll have a speaker We'll talk about sort of the law in general, this kind of give us sort of the layman's perspective, and that will be Scott Manley from WMC. And then we're going to have Eric Sandvig from Alliant, who's going to talk about how Alliant is dealing with the uh, emission requirements, and they're in the midst right now of remodeling or refurbishing um, one of their stacks, and they're going to do the other one, and that's going to have a big impact as well. And then we, we will have um, Steve Steinpreis from Plymouth Foam, um, who has been very active in this area. He's going to talk about how local businesses are dealing with this. He happens to know how a number of local businesses are dealing with this. So I think it's not, if you thought initially it might be kind of a geeky, wonky kind of topic, it's not going to be. I think you're going to find out it's very interesting, and you're going to find out what really what Sheboygan County businesses are doing, where they are, that they're at the leading edge of one, one item of this. So. Um, then the next month, we decided to, the next month we had initially scheduled for the legislators, and uh, I don't think we told them this yet because we just decided this morning, but we're going to bump them from the uh, uh, agenda, not because we don't think what they have to say is important, but they're out of session, um, and they're in campaign mode, and so we thought maybe we uh, will uh, give them a break, and uh, we, we, we also thought it would be good to kind of stay on this sort of green topic, and we are going to bring in a number of area businesses to talk about what area businesses are doing with uh, so the, their uh, trash and the uh, waste that they generate from their operations. Again, what many of us don't know is that many businesses in Chippewa County are at the leading edge of recycling, reuse um, of material. And so we're going to have them come here, we're going to have three, four, small, medium, large, talk about what they're doing and hopefully there'll be sort of some best practices, uh, things that'll come out of that session. So that's the program for uh, June, July, we take a break. In August, we are going to have one of two. We're either going to have the DOT secretary to talk about kind of the things that are changing at the DOT level, um, and also the Sheboygan County specifically, DOT Department of Transportation. And, or we're going to have the um, a representative of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Uh, um, so August and September will be those two 
It depends on schedules, which one will go which one. And then in October, uh, we uh, started to look at um, having some people talk about uh, sort of the, the needs of businesses and, 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 and um, data um, and in communications and, and, and in web um, and wireless. Um, that's a big issue. And one of the big issues is what is going to be the ability to handle the large amounts of data. And we're going to start assembling a group of people who will talk about what is available. And we hope to use that as a, as a session to also get feedback from our companies as to what they think are going to need for um, wireless capability going forward. And then we can compile that information and give it to all the wireless providers and see what kind of feedback they might be able to give us. We, I've had some discussions with them and understand that that's kind of the, that's valuable feedback when they make their decisions on where they want to expand their capabilities. So that's the program that we've got coming up, and I think it I think there's some really neat neat um, um, programs in there. So with that, um, you all have the April events sheet. Take a look at that, and if you can make any of those, we encourage you to attend any of those sessions. So with that. I'm going to get into the program for today. Uh, again, as we build it, what we wanted to do is have a number of representatives of our communities uh, speak about what is happening in various elements of economic development in Sheboygan County. And who we have with us is this uh, lunch are, and this is the order in which they will appear, um, Mayor Don Coleman from the City of Plymouth, and uh, Mayor Pullman will talk about development in Plymouth as well as the railroad, which he has a passing interest in. Uh, the uh, next will be Mayor Randy Meyer from the city of Sheboygan Falls. And, and uh, Mayor Randy will talk about uh, things that are happening in Sheboygan Falls. Next will be Chad Pelichek, who is the director of city development uh, in Sheboygan. And he's going to talk about projects in Sheboygan, things that are happening there. Uh, next, we will have Dane uh, Chikolinski. Did I say that right? Dane? Close enough. Close enough. Okay. <laughs> uh, he's from the Sheboygan County Economic Development, or otherwise known as SCEDC. Uh, he's going to talk about what the SCEDC has been doing for to promote expansion and development in Sheboygan County. And last, uh, as the uh, the uh, cleanup batter, uh, John Rogers from the Chamber will speak about what the SCORE program has been doing to help encourage entrepreneurial development in Sheboygan County. So with that, anybody have anything else they need to add? Okay, then we will start with Mayor Pullman and we're gonna have them speak at the, uh, um, on the docking. <laughs> Thank you, Dave, and, and welcome everybody uh, to today's First Friday Forum. Uh, it's certainly an opportunity where us as business leaders and community uh, employees and workers and, and interested uh, people bring together all of our, I think, talents, uh, which today is, is a, a good forum for the collaboration effort that we, that we require. Uh, we would not be where we are today in, in the Plymouth development and, and economics had it not been for uh, community block grants 25 years ago that uh, put Gilson on the map in Plymouth and, and others. And certainly we've continued in that tradition with collaborating and encouraging, I think, to be business friendly uh, in the community. And business when they know that you are uh, working with them, fighting for them, uh, they respond. And, and I think we have good examples of that, certainly in our cheese industry. Uh, and in the last five years, we've got over 130 million of local business investment in, in Plymouth. Uh, and yes, I'm passionate about the rail. Uh, no, I can't talk on the record about it. But off the record, the choo-choo is coming, people. Okay, but you didn't hear it on the record. Uh, we're very excited about even that opportunity that brings to us with the multiple uh, turnover of dollars to a community. That project is now 19 million. Uh, you can do the multiplier effect and you can get 
50, 60 million real quick out of that. I think the employment opportunity that, that brings along with all of the increase, expansion, uh, the technology center that we uh, collaborated, again, people said we couldn't do it between the city of Plymouth, Plymouth High School, and LTC. Yes, we can do it. Uh, it's a matter of how you go about it and, and work it out. So uh, regulations are there, you follow them, and you can get the job done. Uh, we've got a lot of inquiries coming to us because of the technology center. And I think that that's something uh, that will benefit the whole county. I don't look at businesses coming to only Plymouth. I look at businesses coming to the entire county. We might get this one, we might get the next one. If Randy gets it, uh, that's fine with me. If Terry gets it, that's fine with me because eventually it'll spin off to us, and it does. Uh, we all benefit if it comes into the county, and the more that we can partner with businesses, uh, certainly the better off we're going to be. The um, types of things that we continue to do, sometimes we learn from others um, that didn't go quite the way you wanted them to. And, and quite honestly, uh, Sheboygan lost a couple businesses recently. Uh, when Borden's was in, in Plymouth, they were looking at different locations, investing 13 plus million dollars. Uh, you sit down and say, what does that mean to your community? Uh, in our case, it's $22 million annual salary and benefits that's pumped into the community. Uh, you do a lot of things to, to keep that business in your community for your businesses, your restaurants, your, your grocery stores, and everything else. And people that work at Borden's live throughout the county, so we all benefit from it. Um, we have three TIF districts. We work very hard to uh, keep looking at new tenants for there, but we don't do it to take away from uh, Randy and Falls or Terry and Sheboygan. We want people coming into the community. Uh, I think that the relationship that we have in county government, in city government, uh, speaks highly of the attitude that we're all bringing to the table and none of us are, are greedy um, because sharing it, we all share the bounty. So the message is certainly to, to keep working together. Uh, we invest, we've invested heavily uh, as a city of Plymouth in our different projects. And, and I think the um, more we bring to the table, the more we invest and, and of course we have to you know, balance the books in doing that process. Uh, the more we all benefit as, as sharing that tool. So uh, I thank all of you for being part of the community, believing in uh, the units of government and, and the businesses that we all run and operate and, and participate in. And um, I would encourage all of you to work uh, with your local businesses as much as you can because uh, we're all in the same boat and, and we need your support and you need our support. Uh, but we are growing and uh, we continue to grow and, and uh, I think uh, countywide our unemployment is in a good position. Uh, we continue to uh, add sometimes five jobs here and five there. Uh, we don't necessarily add 100 and 200, that's okay, uh, but, but we're going strong. So thank you very much. John's got the hook out. He told me five minutes. So thank you very much. And uh, Randy, you're next. You're going to stay down there, do you? All right. Thanks. <laughs> Deacon didn't feel like jumping up on the on the stage. Um, you know, as I was preparing for this, I had a few general comments. You know, we sometimes talk about the economy, and it just struck me. You know, is this the Bush economy, the Obama economy, the Walker economy, or the Doyle economy? Um, I think it depends on which part of the political spectrum you come from, 
And I think it also in, creates an interesting dichotomy if you say it's one way or the other, how do you justify it's not the other way in, in the statewide economy? Um, that was just something that, that crossed my mind because we are heading into political season with the recall election, all kinds of ads. And if you listen to these ads too closely, you will think Armageddon is coming. <laughs> okay? You'll notice we had some local elections and none of us predicted Armageddon coming if someone else won or this or that thing happened. So again, I really think up to the local counties, cities, villages, and towns to figure things out. If we wait for the state and the feds to tell us how it's going to be in things, we might be waiting a long time. Martin Falls is in, in a good position. Um, was meeting recently with my utility. We're looking at a way to uh, phase in a tripling of power for one of the companies in our city, which uh, tripling of power means they're doing something right. And we want to make sure our system can handle it. The good news is it can. Um, it's just a matter of how do we want to do that? Do we want to do a dedicated feed to this company? Or do we want to do uh, contingencies based on our, our other systems and really making sure that they have reliable power? That's, that's really what the meeting was, was all about. Um, a lot of times I'm asked about the Highway 32 corridor and what's going on with Falls Metals. Well, we were sued. We won. He appealed. We won. Now he's going to the Supreme Court. My guess is the Supreme Court probably will not take the case, but we'll, we'll see. I've decided to be a nice mayor and not pursue with any other actions unless things get way out of line out there until we get a ruling on the Supreme Court area on that. But really, that'll be step one in cleaning up that corridor. Um, and I knew that would be the toughest step, and it's been, I've had to be much more patient than I'd like to be on it. That's not my personality to be that patient. Um, I come from a wrestling background where it's like, boom, boom, get it done, and let's go on. Um, but sometimes in this job, you do have to be a little more patient. So once step one's cleared up, then we'll look at other issues and other problems on that Highway 32 corridor. But I think there's opportunities to make that a better entrance way to the city. Um, the selling of Plankview Green to Ron Burroughs is an interesting development. Um, uh, Terry Benegan, my chairman of economic development, and I were working with someone else. We thought they were going to be buying that, and then it, Ron stepped in and saw a good bargain um, and picked it up. The economics will change substantially. The bank was over $4 million into that project. I believe Ron paid 900000 Now you can offer some reasonable rents and uh, lease to companies. And so I think things will happen out, out in that area. Um, Sheboygan Falls is from maxed out on our TIF capacity because I wait for the right opportunity. We do have a TIF out on Vision Park, which has about 11 years left on it. Um, but I do have the capability to do more TIF districts if the right opportunity comes along. And the right opportunity to me is something that's $3 million or more in initial development. Um, sometimes I have people that want to do a half million to a million dollar project and they want a TIF district created. Well, from a mayor's standpoint, that's just really not enough to start things. So I have to be cautious and make sure I have enough to get the thing off the ground to a, to a good start. Um, if my predecessors weren't patient in the TIF district I was able to amend to buy Vision Park, we wouldn't have the opportunity to buy Vision Park. So it's really to their patience and good stewardship that I was able to start Vision Park. What we do need to do at Vision Park is about 250000 in an economic development account that's kind of sat there waiting for their opportunity. I think the right opportunity is now to spend some of that money to develop the Vision Park. So as Dane kindly put it to me, it looks like a cow pasture now. And we kind of want to change the look of that to make it look more like a business park or, or industrial park. We've kind of left our, our options open on which, which it will be. I guess it depends on what the first large tenant would, would be out there, really, if it goes more business or more industrial. Um, we created its own zoning called business park zoning, so we kind of we kind of left our options open on that. Um, as far as the city in general, I mean, I look at our downtown area again. Shops are basically full. Did a ribbon cutting yesterday, um, so I think things are going well there. Um, Cheryl has been recently named our uh, executive director of our Chamber Main Street, and I'm excited about that. I've worked together with Cheryl in her other capacity at Chamber Main Street, so I think we've got a good, good, solid working relationship. Um, also dealing with a few hotel possibilities, uh, either a larger hotel or what they're calling a mini hotel. They wanted to call it bed and breakfast, but when you get above eight rooms, it's not a bed and breakfast anymore. So we had to tell them, no, you don't really fall in the bed and breakfast rules. You're going to have to put in your fire suppression systems and things like that. 
Um, so we're not willing to cut, cut corners, but we are willing to work with businesses. Um, Bemis continues to be an extremely strong uh, employer in the Sheboygan Falls area, obviously, and um, was instrumental in working with the county, the EDC, Plymouth, Sheboygan Falls, and a number of entity, other entities that I've probably forgotten on, on working on the rail project. And uh, as Don said, I think it has a real promising uh, look to it right now, which is something three, four years ago when the railroads embargoed and stopped the Sheboygan Falls, there was days where I didn't think there was any promise there. So it just goes to show you just have to stick with it and keep pursuing things. Um, and speaking of pursuing things, we will get a roundabout at the uh, intersection of Happy and 32, just off of Highway 23, right where Green is. I think they'll even make that area more developable and attractive because there will be some traffic control there. It won't be happening until 2015. I only started on that one eight years ago when I was elected mayor. So, you know, good things come if you're patient and, and work with people correctly. Um, so I, I'm excited about that. Um, you know, other than that, I mean, the one thing that occurs to me in Sheboygan Falls is we don't have a lot of problems. I mean, we've had a few companies leave, um, uh, you know, Tom Testweed took Torganol to the Alumarole building and he told me he would have loved to stay in Sheboygan Falls, but we didn't have a big Alumarole building sitting there to be moved into. So um, you kind of have to accept that sometimes you have exactly what that company needs, as Don said. But the good news is it stayed in Sheboygan County. Uh, Viking Packaging is working on building something Again, all those jobs stay in Sheboygan County. So I don't really chalk those up to losses for Sheboygan Falls. Um, there's opportunities now that we have, we'll, we will have and do have some open spaces in our Forest Avenue Park. Uh, one success I had last year is uh, Meyer Aluminum really needed to move across the street and need more space. And they moved into Larry Halling, Larry's Hauling spot. But there was some fire department concerns and we met and I went out there with the fire department and you know some of my fire guys said, well, no, we, we, we inspect plans. We don't go out and well, so this time we're going out to meet with the customer. Come along. And we actually worked it out very nice. They ended up putting a sprinkler system in, which took care of, uh, took care of some of the problems. And, um, and it wasn't just because of Meyer Lumino. I was happy to keep them either. <laughs> but so, so there, there are a lot of things you work at behind the scenes. I tend to like to do things quietly um, and and um, would rather see other people get the credit. That's kind of my, my style of leadership. So again, I think things are going well in Sheboygan Falls. And uh, at the end of this, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. I'm Chad Palaszczuk, the Director of City Development for the City of Sheboygan. And what I decided to take a uh, talk about today is a little different than economic development, but it has ties to economic development. And those of you that are in uh, the city of Sheboygan have probably heard a lot lately about the Sheboygan River dredging project. This is a massive project for the city and the county. This is upwards of 80 to 100 million dollars of federal dollars. So I just want to run through some uh, key points to this. Um, as you can see, it's a short-term inconvenience long-term gain. I think this is a major economic development driver for the county and the city going forward. So this is a little hard to see, but this is a map of the corridor that I'm talking about from the mouth of the Sheboygan River uh, just past 14th Street Bridge to the Kiwanis Park are actually the limits of the dredging that will be occurring later this summer. Um, and then from that point out to Taylor Drive, there's uh, $5 million in habitat restoration projects happening in the areas in green. Uh, so this is the 80 to $100 million project area that's going to be happening. We're, this is a project that's going to be 350,000 cubic yards of material dredged from the Sheboygan River. Um, three major fish and wildlife habitat projects are underway. Uh, there's going to be three dewatering sites, and that's one of the key things. Uh, we're talking uh, up to three, two to three hundred trucks a day leaving downtown Sheboygan uh, via Indiana Avenue and Penn Avenue. Um, some trucks are going to be going north to Hilbert and Whitelaw landfills, and other trucks are going to be going south to a landfill in Germantown. Um, it's a 24 hour a day, seven day operation and there's going to be bright lights and dust and issues and noise and everything you can imagine. Next slide. 
Uh, we have closed, for those of you that are boaters, uh, the A Street boat launch and the 14th Street boat launch are both closed for 2012. All launching will have to occur in the current uh, Harbor Center Marina launch ramps. That's to accommodate dredging operations. Uh, we're discouraging canoers and kayakers from uh, canoeing in that portion of the river from the mouth up to Kiwanis Park. Actually, we're uh, pushing people out beyond Taylor Drive uh, to go upstream from there. All the docks will be put in, or have been put in as planned. We're working with the fishermen to try to relocate docks and get people to where they need to be. It's going to be a huge coordination effort. Um, there's going to be traffic impacts, and uh, portions of Kiwanis Park along the river will be closed for this summer. This is just a brief map. Um, the area in red is the dredging uh, impact area, and then what's proposed for uh, canoers and kayakers upstream and trying to keep them out of the lower portions of the river. This is what you're going to see, five of these, um, two in the lower portion and three between 8th and 14th Street. The dredging is going to be done all mechanically, be put on a barge truck to a dewatering site, um, hence the reason why we're discouraging canoeing and kayaking. Now I just want to talk about long-term gains. Uh, this opens up a wide variety of um, gains for the city and the county as a whole, and, and it offers us some redevelopment opportunities that we hadn't had in the past. Um, you know, there's some key areas of the downtown that had historically been manufacturing could potentially become another use, could be redeveloped for better use, have access to the waterfront. So. Uh, you know, this whole area where we've got estimates of 2013, the potential for of projects that we know of about $4 million that are hanging out for this project to uh, be finished so they can move forward. Um, there was a case study prepared by the Illinois Indiana Sea Grant uh, that really interviewed people across the wide spectrum in Sheboygan to get their feel for what this river does. And the biggest thing that came out of it is the negative impacts that the Sheboygan River has on the region as a whole. Everybody says there's no way I'm going to go fishing in there, there's no way I'm swimming in there. So we really have to work hard to change that uh, perspective. Uh, Long-term gains, 10 to 16 feet of draft. We currently have between 3 and 5 feet of draft. Um, we're at 16 feet outside of sh uh, the South Pier District and 10 feet upward up to the 14th Street Bridge. So this is major from what we currently have now. Some places upstream of A Street Bridge, you can barely get through with a canoe. Um, and then we are... As you know, the Yorktown is making seven stops here. It's a cruise ship, 252 feet. Um, you can see it down here in the corner. That's really what we're looking for in the 14 to 16 feet, is to get more of these types of boats in. If you go to the next slide. We're also going after this one. This is uh, another cruise ship that's actually stopping in Manitowoc this year. So we're, um, once we get some depth, our goal is to get more of these through tourism, uh, stopping and docking off at South Pier and bringing people into the community. Then the last thing I'm going to talk quickly about fish and wildlife habitat. This is, you know, you can bring the river back, but if you don't bring the fish and the wildlife that use these rivers and you know that whole habitat issue, you're not going anywhere. The uh, EPA has designated $5 million towards this. Um, we're under design now. This is the Kiwanis Park area that I'm talking about that's going to be closed. Uh, portions of it along the river brought to those events will still continue. There will be just some impacts. Um, but really it's going to look at how to bring back the corridor and kind of get away from grass cutting and put natural areas and bird habitat and nesting boxes and those types of things. So this is just one of the projects. Go to the next one. This is an island in the river. Uh, most people don't know this island is in the river. It's called the, we called it the unofficial Wildwood Island. It's off of the Nemshoff property. Um, it's currently, every time it rains in the different uh, flows that come down the river, there's all different aspects to what happens in it. And we're gonna, they're going to try to recreate the ecosystem in there and actually create like a log jam like a beaver would do in a river to back it up and, and 
create habitat and backwaters from the rivers. So one of the tasks that we've been working on, which in, the, in my career has never happened, is uh, I went to the, purchasing, the city county purchasing agent and said to him, I have a task for you. You need to find me 350 trees with roots on the bottom of them. And he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah. So that's what we're up against. We're looking for trees. If anybody has any that you're putting a road in anywhere, please let us know. We want your trees because they actually are going to create a dam like a beaver does to fill these backwaters up and create the habitat that's needed. And then the last part is this is a county uh, project, but the city is doing the design and working with a agreement with the county. But it's really that what I would consider a mud pond at the entrance of UW Sheboygan and Lutheran uh, High School. It's it goose droppings and everything. It's always brown. They're going to drain that, create a, have, oh, a wetland in that area. You can kind of see that at the bottom and then do some improvements at Isling and Park. Encourage because this is a key fishing area for uh, the community. So in a nutshell, this is what we're up against. This is a huge project and I keep saying that that the, until the trucks come and they're driving out of the city uh, over the course of the next eight months, this is, you know, there's going to be a huge impact to our downtown and I can't stress enough that we're trying to make sure we've got all our T's crossed and dies I, I, eyes dotted. We've been working very close with the county planning department and EPA and the DNR so um, there's more to come, but really this is, this is huge for us and it's a huge economic driver going forward. So that's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, um, my name is Dane Chekolinski uh, with the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation. For those of you who don't know about our corporation, we are the public, private, non-for-profit that is in charge of promoting Sheboygan County as a prime business, um, prime place to do business. Um, and just a brief overview, is, and the way that we try to accomplish that is uh, we offer information and consulting services to support business growth. Um, this could include anything from non-traditional financing options, cost reduction through state and local programs, as well as site selection and development assistance. So. Um, that's in a nutshell of, of what we do. Um, right away, um, I'm going to give you a little fun fact to talk about tonight when you're at your fish fries. Um, <laughs> did, how many of you knew that our, that our GDP here in the county was $5.1 billion? And to put that into perspective, out of 190 recognized nations around the world, Sheboygan County would be about 150 on that list. That puts us in an economy about the size of Liechtenstein and Kyrgyzstan. I mean, that's, for those of you who know what countries those are, but, but there's 50 nations on earth that produce less than this county. That, that's an amazing fact. Um, right away, what we've been seeing is over the last year, about, about midsummer, something happened, something picked up. And for those of you probably in the broker community realize that um, we started running out of space really quickly, primarily in industrial. And that's one of the challenges that we've seen going forward here. Um, if, you're, if any business here, is particularly industrial, is looking for something with about 20 foot clear, that, that's roughly the size at which modern industrial really starts to need. Anything over 40,000 square feet, if someone's looking at lease, we don't have it. I cannot tell you that two or three businesses were looking at Sheboygan County and had to go elsewhere because they couldn't find space here. So that we have identified as one of our primary issues going forward. So if anyone wants to talk about that and how we can, how we can accomplish that, I, I am, I'm completely yours. The second thing is, last year we, we started a, an initiative for young professionals. We wanted to see what, what their grasp on the county was. And one thing that kept coming up time and time again through this effort, and some of you may know, was a need for market rate apartments in downtown Sheboygan. And the reason for that is, is if you think about it, and everything we've been told about, about the millennials is that they're much more urban in nature. A lot of companies, very great companies here in the county are, are sucking in young people from Chicago, from Milwaukee, from all around the area. They don't have necessarily have connections here, and the first thing they want to do is live in a place where they can socialize, they can then go out and they can be in the middle of it all. So we've also identified that as yet another opportunity moving forward here in the county. Um, in general, some of the actions that we've taken over the last year, 
uh, we've been able to um, make quite a bit of headway on, on getting us more visible in terms of commercial brokers. Um, for the first time, we listed area industrial parks in Excelligent, which is the official commercial database for Milwaukee area brokers, which Sheboygan County is a part of. Uh, before then, uh, nothing was listed, so that was one of the actions we took. We also took that data and we combined it with the local MLS, and we're still having a little bit of development issues, but I imagine here in a week it'll be cleared up. But we've been putting it into a system called Location One, which is supplied um, by a great company in the area, right, Bruce? Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyways, we basically now put, for any company out there, normally you'd have to pay about $3,000 to see what commercial properties were out there. We now supply that for free to everybody on our website. So those are just some of the things that, that we've been working on, just in general, trying to get, uh, trying to get a solid push for, for all the communities moving forward. So um, definitely I'm looking forward to if anyone has any questions, and I will leave it to John. Well, first, on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce, I'm glad to see everybody here. Uh, one of the things that we've tried to promote over the last number of years is cooperation and collaboration, and I appreciate Mayor Pullman and Mayor Meyer and Chad and Dane uh, talking about the ways in which people have been working together to make things happen here in Sheboygan County. What I'm going to talk about today is primarily SCORE. SCORE was an acronym called, that stood for Service Corps of Retired Executives. Well, there are a number of us who are involved with SCORE who are not retired yet. We will be one of these days, I think, but so far we're not. But what we do is work cooperatively and collaboratively with entrepreneurs or other businesses that need some outside assistance or guidance or maybe some new ideas. And make sure you pay attention to that little sign that we have over there because that talks a little bit about SCORE. But I also want to introduce the rest of the SCORE team that's here with me today. Linda Olson, Diane Unger, Shar Pakniak, John Williams, and Dick Kramer. Now, why are these people so important? Well, I can't handle all of the entrepreneurs that come to me. So, you know, just, whoops, just like uh, Aaron Rodgers, who doesn't know how to spell Rogers, by the way, I get to hand off people every now and then to this great group. An example being Lily. I met with Lily. Please stand. <laughs> Lily is kind of a poster child for us right now because uh, I started working with Lily last August with her idea. Well, it quickly became apparent to me that I was going to need some other resources to draw upon so she's sitting between Linda and Diane, and it's very appropriate because the three of them have been working together like crazy over the last number of months. And in the not too distant future, Lily is gonna transform the villager into a restaurant called Catalunya. And did you bring your trial men menus? All right, if you wanna see what Lily is gonna offer at Catalunya, She's got some sample menus. I recommend, from what I've seen, that you look at the menu, you take one, and you plan ahead because we want to support entrepreneurs, right? And if you take a look at some of the industries that are long-standing businesses in this community, they started out as entrepreneurs. You look at Sargento, Sartori, Gentine with an O. Makes a difference. There's all kinds of other examples that we can use of companies in this area that have grown from ideas. The other thing I want to call your attention to is the lineup. You can't tell the players without a lineup, or you can't tell us about the programs. Now, we don't have enough for everybody, so I would ask that if you're really, really interested in SCORE, you take one. And why would you be interested in SCORE? Because... 
we've got a tremendous amount of knowledge in our group that is useful to entrepreneurs, but we need more knowledge. And I know there are some people in this room that can become outstanding score counselors because you have run a business, you've been working with banks as a banker, you're an accountant, or you're a lawyer, or you have some other area of expertise that is really important for somebody who is an entrepreneur that might need just a little bit of guidance, or maybe they need a little bit of mid-course correction. That's what we're looking for. Also, in that is an announcement about an event that we're doing on June 23rd, which is a Saturday, from 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock. We're having a score fest, if you will, where people who are entrepreneurs can come in and meet one-on-one -on -one with counselors. And the counselors are on that sheet with our areas of expertise. You can stay there the whole day if you want and meet with five or six of us. So take, take a look at that. Um, there's other brochures in the packet and we're looking for leads also. In other words, if you have a business or you know of a business that might need a little bit of tweaking, come and talk to one of us. I'm usually the entry point. I'll hand you off if I think it's appropriate or I'll keep you to myself because I love working with entrepreneurs. I really do. The other thing that we would be real interested in is some financial support. You already are supporting SCORE as a taxpayer because SCORE is a small business administration program. We don't get a whole lot. I think we're getting $1,000 this year to do a little bit of marketing, to do a little bit of radio advertising, to do things like that. So uh, I don't want to give myself the hook. Um, and I guess I will stop my presentation there to see if anybody has any questions about anything that you've heard about today, whether it be from Mayor Pullman and the railroad. I'm real glad that that's going to happen. From Mayor Meyer, some interesting things going on there. Dane and the, the downtown program, Chad and the river, or entrepreneurs. So Dave, you want to come back up here and uh, answer questions or field questions? I'll field them. I won't answer them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, questions. Uh, maybe I can ask some four or yeah, five individuals to come back up here so we maybe can see your field questions. So, questions anybody has or any one of the four? Section is getting semis off a of TT on three is uh, pretty difficult these days. Well, that, that intersection, there's plans to have to redo Highway. Okay. There's plans to redo Highway 23, um, which will result in that intersection getting completely refigured. Um, before before Highway that Highway 23 reconstruction, I would say there's no there's no plans imminent with the DOT, so it's. Um, it, it's definitely on the radar. I, I fought very, very hard to keep TT open to Highway 23 because there was there was some plans out there in the future TT would be shut off, and, and I thought that was just uh, very critical to uh, Sheboygan Falls, the airport, um, and the town of Sheboygan Falls Fire Department that TT stay open. So that was successfully done. That that's in the long range plans, but there's no no immediate plans to do anything with that intersection of the DOT and the things. Any other questions? I'm going to ask a question. Okay, go ahead. Um, regarding the dredging, um, obviously there were problems created many, many years ago. But what is being done upriver? Are they discussing that as far as farm waste and other things that are going to be, um, you know, impacting water quality and the wildlife and stuff? Is it going in a beyond upriver to address future problems? I, that's a good question. I think, um, you know, they'll continue to work with the county 
conservation department and some of their programs. I don't know that you know that it, soil sediment runoff is always going to be an issue uh, into the river. I don't you know I don't know if there's there's nothing planned. There there was some upstream that were planned as part of this. It's it becomes a difficult situation when it's federal funding and you have to try to get private access onto properties versus public access. Um, they did look at that. The uh, Sheboygan River Basin Partnership is the one that originally applied to the uh, feds for this funding and they identified, identified these key projects as you know, significant projects that could be implemented and kind of meet the timeline and would then continue with uh, other projects upstream as part of their partnership with the county. Other questions? So this question for Chad. Also, uh, what, do you expect to get all this work done this summer? Is that the plan? Or the plan is to be done. Originally they had said they were going to be done by September 30th and now they said they're going to be done by the end of the year. Following up on the dredging project, uh, I don't know if you mentioned, Chad, when does it formally begin? And is there, like, are they going to start in one area or are they going to work in a different areas? And when they pull the stuff off, are there staging areas downtown? Correct. They're, they're actually, the, the timeline for actually starting it is not confirmed yet. Um, they're still negotiating, as an EPA is still negotiating with their contractor um, to secure that, but the intent was to actually start dredging, start the work in the uh, dewatering site preparation at the end of May and then starting dredging in July. Um, the three locations that are, are on the radar screen um, as being looked at is the former Wisconsin Public Service Corporation Camp Marina site. That's a city-owned property on the corner of 10th and Wisconsin Avenue. That's one dewatering site just north of the Penn, Ave Penn Avenue Bridge. The other one is the Windsor property, which is the former Alliant property, uh, right next to the A Street Bridge. Those two, those two dewatering sites would be for the portion of the river from A Street up to 14th Street. And then the um, offloading site for what was a Corps of Engineers project prior, it's now an EPA project, that actually offloading site is on South Pier, directly uh, east of the Sea Rice Coal condos uh, between there and the fish cleaning station. So unfortunately, a lot of the traffic from that project is going to be right in a prime commercial district. But the issue that came up is there's no other uh, ac accessible is to be able to offload it. And this was a property that's owned by the Redevelopment Authority in the city of Sheboygan. And it was easier access to get to it. But the, they've said all along it's going to be very challenging because the, the river is pretty well developed and there's not a lot of offloading sites to be able to do a project of this magnitude. When you say dewatering, maybe you just explain that. I think we might all have an idea, but... The dewatering is a, basically where they um, put the material in on a sedimentation uh, pad where the water runs off into a sump and then they treat that water and put it back into the river and then they'll mix a material called calcite, which is calcium chloride and fly ash or something into it to thicken it up so and then they'll load it in the trucks and hand and, and uh, truck it away so one of the things that a lot of people have said is is this going to be slopping all over and be all over the road and we're going to be plowing the roads with our snow plows because we have all this sediment in the roads well that's not the case the case is is this material when it leaves the site is going to be like the compost that you would use in your garden um, there's going to be some moisture to it, but overall it's going to be thickened enough that it won't be slopping over the side of the truck. Um, now that's not to say there's not going to be dust and dirt in the roads. Um, we've got a plan with our Department of Public Works as well as the contractor to deal with those issues on a timely basis. Um, but there is going to be dust and there is going to be dirt. Any other guests back there? Has there been any... Uh word on the company that was going to move into the Lear plant? Uh, I know there's Did you hear the question? Yeah. Are you referring to Green and Virotech? Yeah. Um, that, the last we heard on that project is they're still trying to acquire financing, so nothing has been solidified at this stage. If I can ask the mayor, um, I mean the railroad project, uh, what is your crystal ball say when 
that'll be formally complete and announced. Or Mayor Meyer, whoever wants to well, use their crystal ball. <laughs> After uh, five years of being shovel ready, you become patient real quick. So we will extend our patience a little bit longer, but uh, yes, we're very optimistic that it'll go forward. Um, hopefully they'll start to brush out in May. Um, hopefully we'll be the falls if it goes through uh, next September. But uh, that all depends on, of course, all the people that got to sign off yet. So uh, we're, we're hoping and uh, we're very optimistic. I take it you, the, the, the governor's office and the State Department of Economic Development has been working with you on this? We, we uh, have worked with DOT under Governor Doyle and DOT under Walker, we've also uh, worked with both uh, Department of Commerce and and everybody's involved. Um, everybody in their head, but of course you got to have. We have any lawyers in the crowd? I better be careful. <laughs> we, we we have to be. Uh, the lawyers have to bless it, and and of course uh, we all know how quickly they work. Sorry about that. <laughs> But it's, uh, we're very optimistic, yeah. Uh, I, I'm taking the microphone not because I have a question or an answer, but it's because I want to introduce you to somebody who's going to be a very important person and a very nice person for our region, and that's Barb Fleissner. Barb is uh, the recently appointed new account manager for this area. Uh, I've known Barb for at least 10 years. Account manager for Wisconsin Economic Development. So, regional director, regional account manager, good person, friend, uh, tenacious worker, all kinds of uh, accolades that I can bestow and put pressure on Barb. But uh, I, I was delighted when I heard that she was going to be the person representing this area because I know she will work tirelessly. Am I putting too much pressure on you? Uh, tirelessly for us and you as an individual company. So, Barb, thanks for coming down here. Okay, we're almost near our time when we've uh, said we would close. Any other questions anybody has? Okay, hearing none, then thanks again for coming. Remember uh, the, the uh, May 1st Friday, which is going to be on the attainment very interesting program you'll get something by email on that and have a great weekend